We are speaking from the book of Joshua. And um, prophetic week word. And the theme crossover. My brother, my sister, I think it's a, it's a season, it's a time where the nations need to cross over into that what God has for them. It's a season there of what God is prophetically doing in the nations. But for the crossing over, there needs to be a maturity in the church. Because the church must go first so that the nation can go. You know, when, when the nation had to cross the Jordan, God commanded the priests with the presence of God to go in. And as they start to, started to work, to walk with the presence, the Jordan just made way for them to enter. But you know, then they didn't cross the Jordan. They stayed in the middle of the Jordan so that the nation could cross. And then only they crossed. And so the church of Christ in the nations need to get into that place by faith and stand, not go to Canaan, not enter Canaan, but stand in the gap, stand in intercession, stand not for themselves, but stand for the nations so that the nation can cross and then cross. May God give you the wisdom, may God give me the wisdom that we will understand that we will not trust God just for the breakthrough. We will not go by faith so that we can have Canaan. We will not go just to inherit the land. But that we will have the mature unselfishness to stand in the middle of the Jordan so that the others can cross. But that we will stand in that place with the presence. But don't cross without the presence of God. Church of Christ. We as the church supposed to stand as priests with his presence in that place. When the presence move, you move. When the presence stay, you stay. But you know, I mean, God promised to Abram, and then a lot of years passed, and then in Egypt, 430 years, and then a few years, and then another 40 years, before they could enter the promises of God. Now, come on. That's quite a lot of years. And then, when it's the time to cross after all these hundreds of years, God says to the priest, you stand just there. May God help you in that day when you've trusted for breakthroughs, that you will stand in the gap and say, this is not just for me alone. That your prayer life, your prayer life will not be for you alone. You don't pray to cross the Jordan. You pray that you'll go with the presence so that Canaan will not become a curse. Canaan is sent by God that can become a curse in your life. So many times the blessings that God gave Israel took their heart away. They didn't know how to handle the blessings. They didn't know how to handle the prosperity, handle the success. But then say, God, I will not touch the success. I will not touch that prosperity. I first need to learn your presence. And that your presence is the most precious your presence will be the most precious in my life. More than Canaan. I will not use your presence to go to Canaan. But Canaan will serve the purposes of God in your presence. Amen. Let that be so in Jesus' name. Tell your neighbor it's time to cross over. Okay. Joshua 1, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, my servant is dead. Oh, okay. Uh, why, why God had to tell Joshua that Moses is dead? Because Moses had this tendency to stay away for quite a while when he goes up the mountain. They thought Moses is just there for a very short while. And then what did they do? My brother, when you're supposed to wait on God, that's the time to build your golden calf. That's the time to worship other rubbish. That's the, why, the time to get involved with fleshly relationships, like the Israelites did. No, that was just when they came out of slavery. When you come out of slavery and your head is full of the slavery, you will get involved with a lot of rubbish that will bring you in slavery. But when you get out of Egypt, 
You must allow God and his miracles and his hand to transform you. You must remember the miracles of God. Hello? So when Moses went up, he came down, then he went up again, and he came down and he went up again. Quite a few times that Moses was like, not disappearing. So this time, when God has transformed this nation, Moses went up again. But this time there was a generation they didn't create their golden calves. They didn't bow before other idols and other gods. There was a, a nation faithfully waiting. Faithfully waiting. Why? Because they had to learn. I will not murmur anymore. Oh, they had for 40 years, they had to honor their father and their mother in spite of all the mistakes that they made. Because they are running around, they are, oh, sorry, walking around in the desert for 40 years because of the mistakes of the parents because the parents moan groan criticize had issues with everything and because they had issues with everything god said you will not inherit your destiny you will die in the desert so my brother my sister make sure you you deal with that rubbish with the issues and the this and then i have a problem with that then i have a problem with that then i'm negative about this and when circumstances okay and somebody <sighs> And then when God, you must wait on him, that the devil is there for your golden calves, so that you will bow before that and get involved with rubbish. No. For 40 years they had to learn from the parents. When God says, do, then you do. You don't moan, you don't grow, you don't talk back. When the leader says, go for it, like we did with Moses, don't do that. And for 40 years, they had to learn how to respect mom and dad. Because, And even though I'm walking for 40 years here in the desert, because of their mistakes, I will not judge them. I will honor them. I will honor them. Because that's the only key for me to enter the land. Hello? So when they had to cross, when it's the time to cross, we, we had a nation that understood how to respect God, how to respect the leaders, how to respect their parents, and they were ready to do exactly what God has for them. And God needs to find you in such a place. The problem is not to get them through the desert. The problem was to get Egypt, Egypt out of their hearts and out of their minds. That was the problem. Desert is not the problem. Desert must serve you to get the rubbish out. <laughs> Let your desert become a servant to get the rubbish out. Don't pray the desert away. Pray that you will get Egypt out of your system. Amen. So that you can be in the place, in the desert, with everything that you need to cross the Jordan. To cross the Jordan. Red Sea, not a problem. Desert, not a problem. Jordan, not a problem. But to get Egypt out of the people, that's the problem. God's going to help us all. Amen. First point then. Understand the facts. Understand the facts. Moses is dead. Understand your situation where you are in. That has to do with honesty. That has to do. You need to be honest with yourself where you are at. Not that in honesty you condemn yourself. No. No condemnation. But how can you bring your everything before the Lord if you're not honest about where you are at? So make sure that in what you do even wrong and what you did wrong, that there's not a justification, there's not a cover-up, there's not a this. God cannot work in that place. God cannot. Hell and the devil can work in that place where there's a cover-up and the darkness because it's their home, the darkness. Devil feel at home with you when you just keep on walking in that darkness. But come with honesty. Come with the, the facts. And put it out there. But don't stay with the facts. Remember, Mr. Joseph, when the brothers came, and he told them, you intended to harm me. You intended to harm me. Everybody remember that scripture, hey? Genesis 50, 20. You intended to harm me. The facts. And then he went to the truth. But God had a plan for, a, for his nation to have food in a time of famine. That's why it had to happen. And if you can look at the facts in the light of the truth, you will have your breakthrough always. You will have your breakthrough. You will go with God. You will go with God. And you will see amazing things, what God's going to do, even in this season, in the world. 
Great. Next one. Get ready to cross. Tell your neighbor, Nick, get ready to cross. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, because you understand the facts, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. Get ready to cross. What on earth must you do to get ready to cross? Hello. First of all, expectation. Secondly, I believe what God is saying. Thirdly, not, I need to understand what's going to happen there. To cross by faith, many times we first want to understand what's happening on the other side uh, because of a responsibility. I'm taking responsibility for what's happening in my future. I have faith and I will go when I understand. No. I will go by faith because I will please him. Amen. But you need to ask Holy Spirit, what do I need to settle in my heart before I cross? The Israelites were not ready to cross. It was not just God wanted to punish them. They were not ready to cross. They would have been slaughtered by the giants. Hello? But God must be glorified in everything. And he couldn't go with them. And they couldn't go with him into their destiny, into the success, into that what he, he had for them. That's why he had to deal with them for 40 years. To get that time of people that are ready to cross even if it takes another 40 years so that you become ready to cross take the challenge with the holy spirit in jesus name number three know and be in the place where god wants to take you in that what he has for you i think there must be a what somewhere in Know and be. Know the place where God wants to take you. And be in the place there where God wants to take you. What does that mean? Somewhere you need to be at the Jordan. But to be at the Jordan, that's the miracle. To be ready there at the Jordan to cross. Be there with God. I will not stand you can stand at the Jordan ready to cross into Canaan with the promises, you know the promises, you know the word, you have the faith. But if you do it without his presence, if you do it without his presence, it's going to be one mess up. And then you can say, anybody experienced that in their lives? You had the will of God. You were really in God's will. Really had the promises of God. You spoke the word. You had the faith. You were faithful in prayer. You did all of these stuff. And you crossed, and it was one mess up. God wasn't there with you before Canaan, before the Jordan. You need to learn how to walk with God. And when the presence, because the presence could have taken Israel just straight pew, to the Jordan. And me and you, we want to go by faith straight into our destiny. And then God take us here and there and there you sort out and there and then we end up here to cross the Jordan there. Why? Because God is there with us to cross. And the presence will go first. And then the nation will cross. Amen. Are you with me? Be in that place. Step with stature into promises. Number four, let's go. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Now you can don't go and put your foot on a Ferrari and say, oh, God has given me a Ferrari. Uh, no, it's not like that. If you're walking with God, if you allow him to make you ready, if you take his principles, then where you go, you go of stature. When you walk into the university, when you walk into school, into the school where you work, when you walk into your business, into your restaurant, into whatever, you come with a stature that is from him. It's not about some other magic trick that where you walk, God is giving it to you. No. When you walk where he walks, when you walk in his footsteps, when you walk in Christ, in Christ in you, where you walk, you come with stature and God will give it to you. But then these principles must work for your life. Because this is not some other magic trick. Step in with stature into, your, into promises. So when God's giving you the promise of wherever you will walk, God will give it to you. 
you cannot just put that little scripture and take it out of context. You must make sure you walk with stature into that place. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And God will do a major thing. I, uh, I spoke about this 27 times already. When I got into the army and later we prayed for Satan as priest and the guy came to repentance. But when I came into the bungalow, you know, they had these bungalows, uh, not as big as this hall, but very big bungalows. And in the middle there was a, a, a wall, uh, not very high, and then a lot of beds that side, a lot of beds this side, a lot of bed this side, a lot of bed this side. Maybe we must do that for Kriari and Marcieta. And, uh, and when I came in this side, later the guy that came to repentance, the Satanist priest, he was on that side. He told me when the, when the new guys came in, I was one of them, that medium, that de demonic thing, told him, now you, you have no authority on that side anymore. Hello? You don't know what you carry. Okay, from now on you know what you carry in Jesus' name. You need to know what you carry. Because immediately the devils recognized authority that was in me. But if he could see, I don't understand the authority that I have in me. No, 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 sorry. We can do what we want. That guy don't understand what he has. <laughs> the devils understand authority. Number four, see the definition and boundaries for the future and the promises of God for your life. That's number five, and it is in verse four. Okay. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, from the great river Euphrates, uh, all the Hittites country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. Okay, this will be your territory. My brother, my sister, you can cross the Jordan. But if you think you must go and take the land, but you don't know where you're going, you go and have a fight with these nations and that, those nations, but God didn't give you that as your territory. You're going to have a mess up. Even though you're faithful through the desert, uh, excellent testimony how you went through the Jordan, everything, but there... You don't understand what God has for you. When we got the farm, praise the Lord for free. Uh, and then all the visions and all the stuff happening. I found myself in some form of stress. Because now I'm trusting God for this 200 million, 300 million. For everything that must happen and all the things. And I realized, no. I'm going to kill myself with a vision. I'm going to suffocate myself with everything that must happen. And suddenly this weight came upon me. I said, no, God, show me, please, what is my portion? What must be established through my life here? If this is one practical example. And what is for another generation to establish here? Maybe that orphanage village with 12 houses is not part of my portion to be established here. Hello? But if you can focus on that, what God has for you even though the promises are like this. What is my portion? He, you must see the definition and the boundaries of the Canaan that God has for you. Otherwise, you will go into Canaan, and from tomorrow till you die, you will just have fights and wars and fights and wars, and you will say, the enemy is against me, and, and I must stand against the enemy, but, but you got yourself into fights that you were not supposed to be. You organize some walls for yourself that wasn't part of God's plan. Why? So it's not just cross and go for the promises of God. You need to see what is the exact boundaries. I'm not talking about understand what God's going to do. No, that's for you to be in control. Uh -uh. But understand the boundaries of what he has for you. Amen. Verse 5. Number 6. Victory is yours. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. It wasn't a promise 
about you and your wife. Uh, it was, uh, <laughs> it's about the enemy, hello? Nothing can come against you. You will stand in victory. If you stand with Christ, you stand with statue, you stand where God has called you to be. You have the victory. Nobody can stand against you. Walk in Christ. Walk in Christ. And don't you give your circumstances stature. Don't give your feelings, your emotions, your weakness, your, your own thinking, your, your own thought patterns. Don't give that authority. Don't give that stature to come and stand against you. Are you with me? Okay, that's number six. We go. Number seven. See and believe God's committed presence to you. What are we talking? No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. See and believe God's committed presence to you. My brother, my sister, first of all, you need to believe that God always wants to be with you. You need to believe that God is faithful. He will not turn his back on you. But sometimes when you do something wrong, you have the wrong attitude, you struggle with some flesh, you feel so far away from him. Maybe in the past, not in the future anymore. But maybe sometimes we go through those phases. You're far from intimate relationship, yes. But God will never leave you, never forsake you. You will ignore him. And he will not force himself into a relationship with you. He will not force the relationship. But he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. But he will not force the relationship. Are you with me? And so that is your choice to ignore him. That is your choice to, to have a life in his presence. Ignoring him with no conscience speaking to you at all. You can have that life. And just when you need him. You call on him. That is not respect. I need to respect his presence. Are you with me? See and believe God's committed presence to you. That God is committed to be with you. He said it. That's it. And he will not turn back on his word. He will not turn back on his word. And before you cross the Jordan, you need to know God will be with you. You need to know God will be with you. Because you need his presence in the presence of success. You need his presence in the presence of victory, in the presence of a lot of things that can be excellently working out for you. When you are successful, you need to know God's presence with you. Otherwise, you're going to, rep going to replace your focus with the, the presence of success. Enough examples about that in the, in the Bible. Hello. But, right, number eight. Be strong and courageous to lead them into my will. What are we talking about? Verse 6. Be strong and courageous because. Why? Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land. Be strong and courageous to lead them into my will. My brother, my sister, you can stand by faith for your breakthrough in your business. You can stand by faith for your breakthrough in your situations. You can stand by faith for what God has for you. But you need to be strong and courageous to lead others into that. That through your life, many people must be led into destiny. And to do that, not to be selfish, it's very easy to be selfish. But you need strength. You need guts. You need to be courageous. Not to be selfish. <laughs> Are you with me? Not to live for yourself. You're not just going to not live for yourself. Very easy to live for yourself. But you need to be strong and courageous to lead others into destiny. That your breakthrough, your success, must have an impact on many others. Amen. Because here we are standing at Joshua 1, and it's a time for great success. It's a time for great victory. It's a time to see a lot of things change into a very, very, very positive way after hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of promises given by God through the generations. And now it's going to happen. But you better understand. Don't take courage through the success. Take courage because of his presence. And don't do it for yourself because it's going to destroy you. Your destiny will be like your curse if you do it. If you do and live your success for yourself. Be strong and courageous to lead them into my will. 
Ne? Was uns mit Makar? Be courageous because you will lead them. Amen.